So in this video, I'm going to talk about the electrophilic addition of HX to alkenes, where X represents either chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And in addition, I'm also going to give you the mechanism for it as well. So to begin with, let's look at the overall reaction and not just the mechanism. So essentially what is happening in this electrophilic addition is that you take an alkene. So this alkene right here, you add an HX where X can be bromine, chlorine, or iodine. In this case, we use bromine. And then the final product you get down here is an alkane and the double bond is removed. And so let's take a look at the mechanism of how this happens. And so here I've drawn that the nucleophile, as you can see, is this alkene. So the nucleophile is the double bond. And then on the other hand, you have the electrophile is this hydrogen. And so what's going to happen is this nucleophile is going to attack the electrophile. And then the electrons from the hydrogen are going to go on to the bromine. And then, so you're going to get two products. You're going to get a carbocation and then a bromine anion. So then the next step, what's going to happen is that this bromine is going to attack this carbocation right there and essentially just attach on to that. And then so as you can see, down here would be your final product. And so this mechanism is a two-step mechanism in which the pi bond is first protonated. So the pi bond is the nucleophile while the hydrogen is the electrophile. And then the halide, which is the result of the first step, attacks the carbocation. So right here, this halide, this bromine comes in and attacks that carbocation. And so now you might be wondering, well, how do I know which carbon of the alkene becomes a carbocation. And so let's talk about that a little bit. And so here, sorry about just being a little messy, but here we're going to look at what happens and how you decide which carbon essentially the halogen is going to get added onto. And so here, as you can see, there's essentially two different paths you can undergo. Path one goes this way and path two goes that way. So the main difference is you can see the carbocation. And so it all depends on carbocation stability. And so as we remembered, we learned before that the tertiary carbocation is more stable, is the most stable carbocation, so therefore it's most likely to form. And so as you can see right here, uh, sorry for not drawing the car hydrogen in blue, but as you can see here, the hydrogen gets added to this carbon on the right. And so as a result, that creates a carbocation on a tertiary carbon on the left side. And so that's a lot more stable than down here if the hydrogen got added to the carbon on the left you would have a carbocation on a primary carbon. And so therefore, this molecule will be a lot less stable, a lot less likely to form than this one. And so after you do the final step and essentially get your product, you compare this molecule with this molecule, essentially. And so you're going to get this as a major product. So this is this path is going to be the major path that it undergoes. And so in the next video, I'm going to, I essentially just explain Markovnikov's rule. I don't want to drag this video on for too long, but in the next video, I'm going to explain that in more detail. But for this video, it pretty much sums it up for the electrophilic addition of HX to alkenes. And so thank you for watching this video. If you liked it or found it useful, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this.